So here I am getting ganked up top by the enemy team Jax, but I do manage, land it, manage to land my snare on him. And actually, you see that Malkai's coming in top, so I'm gonna hunt his stupid ass down. As he face checks the bush with Malkai, I just drop that EQ. Just really mess him up there. Steal those double buffs and get myself the first blood to get a huge advantage over Malkai. Low and unprotected by his jungler, Mundo is just a sitting duck top lane waiting for my cooldowns to come back up so I can just EQ and watch him burn and die. Matching his flash very quickly to get the auto attack for the kill. Combined with the burn on my Q, Keystone, E, and red buff, I just sat him in a kettle and he simmered good. Good and dead. Just the way I like dead. Get it because he died. He's dead. It's funny. Here, we have our jungler top lane with us, so we're just gonna go and bait Mundo into, uh, you know, a pretty bad fight for him. Um, I'm gonna come back here, tank one more tower shot, just so Malkin can get out with full HP. And that's just gonna be, you know, a clean, swing tank dive, counting on that dangerous game there to heal me out of that last tower shot and save me from dying. So, you know, that puts us in a pretty good spot. So here, we just came out a little smackdown with, uh, you know, Mundo, as you can see, he's, he's ulted, you know, to cover all of his HP. It wasn't really a, a smackdown so much, as much as I just kind of spread my ass cheeks over his face and took the biggest shit I could possibly muster. Because he did literally no damage to me, and I got him to a point where his health bar was pretty low. So over here, I'm actually going to go find one of his pink wards, but Mundo's going to make the mistake of trying to fight me. Now... Watch as Mundo gets his ass handed to him because he can't fight me. Watch as he flashes away and I flash after him because he can't fight me. Now, the mistake Mundo made there was messing with me. Now you see, Swain is a bird. Mundo is a purple man. Everyone knows that birds are naturally aggressive towards the color purple. So here's a classic example of our team not being on the same page as their god and savior, me. I thought we were going to die the enemy team and kill them like men. Turns out, the other four members of my team have a combined testosterone level of zero, and they're just going to hide in bush. That being said, since my testosterone is so high, and dolls from a bird, I just turn around and throw my other birds at Ash and Morgana, and they die. Woo! So here, as you can see, I've just bet Mundo over my knee and given him a thorough ass paddling. But, his ass still has some parts that aren't splotched with internal bleeding, so me and my buddy hunt him down and, well, it's safe to say he won't be sitting down for quite a while. So here, as I'm taking a lovely Sunday stroll through the park, Lux shows up. That was nice. And she just started throwing magic at me, so I killed Morgana. I don't know. She was just kind of there. I was pretty mad, you know. Honestly, it wasn't really mature. She didn't really deserve to die. She didn't even interrupt my walk, but I just had to get her. So, it's what it is. So here, there was a ping to be careful. You know, we need to get out of here, right? You just can't fight them. Just give them the dragon. Unfortunately, my team wasn't on the same page, so I gotta come running back. To scoop them all up in my arms and carry my babies in safety. How do you do this? Because you walk up and you one shot the grady carry. And then you just keep walking around and use Onyas, because HP. And you just keep walking. That's all you gotta do. You gotta hit R and keep walking. See if you hit R and keep walking. Look look how easy it is. All I did was hit R and walk and everyone's dead. So here, as you can see, we're trying to do the Elder Dragon. Unfortunately, we never actually get this Elder Dragon. Though we end up getting a kill and resetting it three times, it just never goes over to us. Shortly after that, they actually manage to get a pick on our team. They take the Elder Dragon, and they're going to end this game. It is going to be the first loss of this video. Um, and that's obviously tragic, because I wasn't doing too bad, but our AD care was a little too far behind and couldn't really contribute the... DPS we needed, so it's gonna end up in a loss. Feels bad, man. So here, we've just returned to lane from a very unfortunate death to, uh, to Fiora. Now, alligators are naturally aggressive creatures, as I'm sure you guys know. 
based on what happened in Disneyland, uh, when a father and his kid went swimming, and the kid never came back. So, as the naturally aggressive alligator I am, I'm gonna tell Fiora to shut up. How do I tell Fiora to shut up? Well, you see, when an alligator and a fencer love each other very much, it's a lie. The alligator just wants to kill the fencer. That's... Yeah, that's it. So here, after putting down a can of spinach, like you do as a lifeguard and a sailor, well, obviously as a sailor, because how can you beat people up if you don't drink spinach, but we also do it as a lifeguard because, similar to sailors, we're muscular people that spend a lot of time near water. After drinking my spinach, however, turns out their team was pretty jealous, so um, they, they wanted to steal my spinach. I wasn't going to let them do it, so instead of letting them steal my spinach, me and my boy from downtown just knocked their heads off like baseballs. And it was cool. So here I am, top lane. Doing as all top laners do. Um, wondering, you know, how much longer I'm gonna live. Cause, it's pretty scary thinking about death as an alligator. Cause after you die as an alligator, you just become a pair of boots. Um, fortunately, their Fior is actually the one who becomes the pair of boots. Uh, cause I, I kill her tower, and then I kill her. So, if you guys ever see me walking around my hometown of I can't tell you where it is, you'll know it's me, because I'll be wearing Fiora skin boots. So here I am, you know, hunting down this crazy fencer lady, but she does her fancy sword magic, and, you know, apparently I hit myself over the head, and I'm the one that can't move. So that's, that's neat. Sword magic. But, um, as all predators do, when one prey runs away, I give up and I run to the forest to look for more. Now, closely related to the snake, alligators are also very sneaky in the forest. Which is why I'm able to just surprise ambush this archer sheep thing. Um, so I kill her. Uh, it was cool. And then I just kind of waddle away. Like a penguin. But also an alligator. So here, I get a little thirst for your blood, you know, ready to kill that fencer lady again, so I pull out that, uh, pull out that flash there, you know, really get her with that red buff, slow her down, make her burn, and I'm gonna do the slice, dice, take my advice, don't look twice, roll the dice, uh, cause you're a mice, and you have lice. Kappa. So here I am, you know, hanging out with Leaf Erickson, cause he's my bud. And this rude lady, uh, with her sword and stuff, is rude. Um, so I kill her. Um, and then my buddy here, he's like, hey, let's have a barbecue. I'm like, sweet, I just found a cow. And so we butcher him, because that's how you cook a cow. And then this happens. Um, there's no good way to justify that. It was just kind of dumb. So, after those set of kills there, um, as glorious and wonderful as they were, uh, we basically just kind of got stomped for the rest of the game. Uh, I kind of fell off, Olaf kind of fell off, and everyone just kind of died, and it was a pretty feels bad man game. That's going to be the end of our series, trying to get to gold too, with two straight losses. But, at least I still have... Actually, no, that's, that's pretty gone too, we won't talk about that one. So, I actually forgot to record this game, um, but I'm going to summarize it in that I lost lane, and then we lost the game, and it was bad. So here, I'm level 6, and the first rule of Twist of Fate is that when you hit level 6, you need to show bottom lane that, surprise, I'm level 6. Um, it doesn't go exactly perfectly, because Ezra was pretty low, and Gangplank just ulted him, so that actually did get first blood over their team. But I was able to kill Soraka before dying to the tower. So all in all, it wasn't great, but at least we got something. So here, I'm jogging my little cowboy, you know, slacks back in the lane. I don't actually remember what they're called. And you know, Rengar's coming in for a gank. Rengar actually almost dies here, but he makes it with just a sliver of HP. Which probably caused Ryze to smash his face into the keyboard in frustration. And, well, he flashed and then turned around so I could kill him. What a nice guy. So here I am, cooking up another juicy all through bottom lane. You know, hauling my red cowboy boots right back in there. 
going straight for Soraka because if you guys don't didn't know from my last video, not only is an alligator a natural predator of a unicorn, but I also just really hate them. So, kill her, um, kill Lucian, and watch my team die horrible deaths. Woo! Here, going in for a gank on Rise, but unfortunately a new challenger approaches. Um, and what that means, uh, well actually what it means is Rengar died. Which actually does cause Rise to flash, but he turns around to try to kill me. Which, I mean it works, but he dies too. So, I don't know how worth it was for their team, but it was definitely good for me. So here I come out fresh of a hot and steamy teleport bottom lane. Going for that flash and rise, but landing the silence pool. Gonna slow me down just a little bit, but, you know, another gold card, you know, knock off the unicorn's head, and the second card to knock off Rise's head, and a third card so Ezreal can knock off Lucian's head. Heads will roll like stones. And because they're rolling like stones, they won't gather any moss. So here I pop my ult to sniff out all the bad guys as we just slowly waste more time at Dragon. But all of a sudden, a Kale teleports in. And, you know, I got my homies back, so I'm just gonna, you know, flash up and gold card him. But what I didn't expect was for my gold card to do all that damage. I'll be honest, I'm kind of terrified of Twisted Fate after playing this game. So, from that little scuffle at the uh, Dragon Pit, we actually do end up taking Baron shortly thereafter. And... Well, then we run into their base and see how many people we can kill before we end the game. Um, as you can probably see by the triple kill Ezreal just got, it was a lot of people. This is going to be our first win of this episode. I'm um, putting us at 1 and 2 on the day. GG. I guess. More like GS because it was a good stomp. I don't know. So, up until this point, Gangplank has actually been sharing his tent with Nocturne. Uh, you know, they've been making some s'mores on a fire. You know, they've been singing songs, doing other things, you know, just generally having a good time camping me. Well, I had enough of that, so I called my homie, you know, down from the underground, you know, and, uh, killed Gangplank. Mercilessly. And then, of course, a little while after, as you can see by her taxing the hell out of me, we do push down this tower and get first tower blood, and it was nice. So as it turns out, uh, you know, Nocturne really didn't put away his tent properly, uh, so I had to really help Gangplank tear it down, because he was struggling to do it on his own. I think he hurt his back. Um, but actually, it turns out Azir wanted to help put down the tent too. Uh, unfortunately, I mistook his intentions and thought he was coming to just join the goons in their tent. So, unfortunately, he did have to pay the ultimate price. So Gangplank's actually pretty pissed that I'm killing his turret. Although, to be fair, at the time, I really just thought it was another tent. I was helping them take it down. But, needless to say, he wasn't too happy. Now, I didn't really know why he was attacking me, because, you know, I'm pretty innocent. I, I just thought it was a tent. Um, so I just, well, I killed him. I threw him against the wall, I looked him in the eye, he said, Sir, please don't rape me, and I responded with, I'm not going to rape you, I'm just going to kill you. And then he died. So up here I'm getting ready for my poacher's claim. For those of you who don't know, Nocturne actually has a second name that Riot doesn't want you to know about named Poetry. So yeah, Poetry Slam basically just means I'm going to bash his face in. And there you go, you know, snap, snap your fingers, you know, say a poem that doesn't rhyme. Poetry Slam, Can Jam, Kablam, because I'm the man. Yeah. Okay. Please help me, I'm dying inside. So here, as you can see by me jumping in aggressively and throwing everyone, you know, it's time to fight. And thank God we have misfortune, because she brings dignity to what would otherwise be a vulgar brawl. But then she dies, and the brawl becomes very quickly vulgar. Um, which is going to cause me to run away, because I'm actually afraid of vulgar. You know, it's just a really mean-sounding word, and I do everything I can to avoid it. Um, but...
but this Azir was running after me, and he was just screaming vulgar at the top of his lungs. And you know what? I'll be honest, that kind of upset me. So, I, uh, I threw a boomerang out of space, uh, a lot, and, well, that was the end of that. So, here we are, you know, in the mid lane. Uh, we're having a family picnic, just if it was running late, but he got here. Um, but then the pirate shows up, which was pretty rude of him, because he wasn't even invited to the family picnic after he behaved last year. Um, but I left my alt because I'm boosted, um, and I run away. But then I turn around, and I walk around for a long time. And then I throw some stuff at a tower, but then Sejuani, you know, finally lets him have it for ruining the family picnic. And, well, then we just kind of run into their base. Uh, we kill the bird man. Um, then we kill the other thing, the shadow man. Um, and from here, we just kind of end the game. So that's, that's nice. It's really nice. And so, after three losses today, and then two wins afterwards, that is going to leave us at 87 LP, just one win outside of our series to try for gold to a second time. Tune into the next episode just to find out, do I make it and will I not mess up again? See you then. So anyway, feel free to like or subscribe to my channel. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter and Twitch. The links will be in the description below. If there's anything you want to see, like in a full game commentary, a specific champion, or if you have a suggestion for a different game, you can of course drop that in the comment section below. And as long as it's something I can feasibly do, I'll break it out for you. Thank you guys, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.